this is a IMO uh, derived from forest microbes. So and, this and this is, is rice and this is fermented. Rice, brown sugar, rice, brown sugar, and the inoculum. So right now we're breeding IMOs. If I can shake this up, that may foam up a little bit for you. Woo-wee. Okay, so it smells like a, see that foam come up? Very much yeah. alive. Yeah, uh, and so the, this one you use the uh, the forest inoculum. Yeah, this this I use the forest. So first, what I do is I have a cake tray at home. Yeah, probably about this wide, this this long, and I put about an inch and a half of of rice on the base of this cake tray, almost like you would brownies. And at that point, after that's done, and, and I let the rice cool. Everything's cool, and you can you can cook it, or supposed to cook it more on the dry side. And on the dry side, uh, after it's cooled in the Tupperware, you sprinkle the microbes that were collected in the mountains in the old, in the ancient forest, the old forest, uh, and you sprinkle that on top of the rice, cover it with the the lid, and seven days later, you'll see a a white cloud of mycelium. Uh, it looks like cotton candy. And at that point, that gets applied to 50% sugar, uh, and this is what we store it with. So these are the essence of okay, the microbes. Okay, so, so the microbes are started on the cooked rice first. First. And then you're moving into the sugar and the fermentation of the container. That's right, and we we'll use, we'll use by weight 50% sugar to, to the rice, and what that does is it gives food for the microbes, allows them to multiply. And then we use this at a dilution rate of a thousand to one in a solution for inoculation. So it goes pretty far if you're spraying it down the rows. I see. Uh, now that's not the only microbe we use. We use the uh, bamboo microbe, which is prepared the same way. And one of the, uh, the other microbes that we use is uh, lacto acid bacilli, which is uh, is a, is a great microbe because that is aerobic as well as anaerobic. Uh, and the way we make this is we use rice wash. When you cook rice and you're going to wash the rice, you take that wash and you, I put it in a Tupperware. I leave it on the counter for about seven days and I let uh, sour mm -hmm. smell come through. Uh, once I smell that it's sour, I use one part of this rice wash to ten parts whole milk. What will happen after another seven days is the milk will start to separate. The curds will float to the top, the whey mm -hmm. will go to the bottom, the top is like cottage cheese, and in the middle is a yellowish fluid, right, which is the lactoacid uh, bacteria. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that lactoacid, again, add equal parts of brown sugar, and that's a preservative. If you don't add the brown sugar, you have to keep it in the refrigerator. Then you're so the, at the price of milk in Hawaii, though, that makes a pretty expensive concoction. How do you get around the price uh, of milk? Well, it, it does, but, okay, so, so for five gallon, uh, a gallon of milk, uh, that's about eight pounds of sugar. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that, I made this batch uh, last October. Okay, so still, it's lasting a while. Because of the dilution rates. Okay. The dilution rates are uh, so, uh, one to a thousand. One to a thousand, huh? So it goes a long way. It goes a long way. All right, you're describing all these inoculants. You got one that's made out of uh, Chinese herbs, angelica, garlic, ginger, and so on. You had another one that you're using uh, uh, with fish heads, right? Yes. We take, and it's basically a, a, a fish scraps, and we're using 50% sugar to 50% fish scraps. And that's heads, guts, whatever you can get at the, at the fish scrap store, mm -hmm. and 50% sugar. And it does not smell if you use the proper amount well, you, of sugar. You gave me some. I put it in my orchard. Yeah. And yeah. It, it doesn't doesn't smell. So mm -hmm. that's, my, that's what we call FAA, fish amino acid. All right now, mm -hmm. this, so at this point in the orchard, because I'm in my reproductive cycle of the orchard, we're, we're starting to flower and fruit. So we're going to back off of the nitrogen, but part of, part, of, part of fruit production is adding calcium. So what we're going to do now is going to make what we call a water-soluble calcium. These are eggshells that have been slow roasted in a pan. Mm. Uh, and uh, just to remove any of the albumin, any of the liquids. So uh, these are primary eggshells. And again, we're going to use 10 to 1. I think I got some. Uh, 
can do. This is what we call WCA, water soluble calcium. So, and you know, you can be as scientific as you want, or you can be as low tech as you want. But basically, the recipe is 10 parts uh, uh, rice wine vinegar to one part eggshells. I was wondering why you had this rice vinegar sitting next to me. Yeah. So uh, I, I actually use a rice vinegar it, uh, itself as an input. All right, so that looks like to me one part of that jar. And we're going to add 10 parts vinegar and watch the magic show. We use, uh, we use rice wine vinegar and we try to get uh, brewed vinegar as opposed to distilled butter vinegar brewed I see it's on the label is a word right there right? 10 parts vinegar to one part eggshell and uh, what will happen here is that these eggshells will start to rise and float and basically you're having a reaction because of the acid in the vinegar is going to dissolve the calcium out of the eggshells and now I can use this calcium as a liquid spray out in the orchard at approximately thousand to one any, ratio. Any particular thing you use calcium spray for? Or just I use part the calcium of the spray in the following the nutritive cycle when I have fruit embryos and or buds on the plant because mm -hmm. that's its highest <laughs> demand is em calcium. Em embryos, well. eggs. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so we'll give... So we get dancing eggshells over here. Dancing eggshells, water-soluble calcium. So like I said, those eggshells turn rubbery, you know, at the end of this process. Mm -hmm. That activity slows way down. That's your indication that it's done, and use that as a, a thousand to one. Okay, so how many eggshells to start with? How many eggs start with? Start with? Oh, jeez, a lot. <laughs> I'm, I may have had uh, 75 eggshells. So you're, and now how are you getting all these eggshells? Go to the restaurant. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay. Oh.